The back nine of the season is upon us and this week our players take on the formidable challenge of the Vale Golf and Country Club in the beautiful Worcestershire countryside. In every corner of every heart of every daydreamer there is a path Only you can take it, only you can start Hello and welcome to the Glau.uk Worcestershire Masters where things are getting saucy at the midway point of the season as our players fight for five life-changing challenge tour cards. Well, on the subject of the Order of Merit, here's how it looks heading into week eight. All very tight between second and sixth spot, but it's Pavan Sagu who's in third after his win at Abridge. Ryan Brooks played one less event than Sagu, but after his win at Cumberwell Park, it puts him in second. Sitting clear at the top is Dermot McElroy after his great victory at Belton Woods. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Kit Alexander right here at the Vale, as we can see behind us. Um, Kit, let's start by talking about the order of merit. Dermot McElroy has catapulted to the top, hasn't he? He wants to secure that challenge tour card a lot earlier on than last time where he just missed out, didn't he? Yeah, delighted to see him win last week. It had been coming. He got the first win in his Euro Pro Tour career last year. Went into the Tour Champs in fifth spot. In the end, didn't quite do enough to get promoted, finished in seventh. So really heartbreaking. But his game has been there for three or four years. He's just been waiting to push on and make that next step up. Now with the win in the bag, top of the order of merit. He thinks he's just about got enough to get it secured. That can be dangerous thinking at this stage in the season, but I can't see any way the way he's playing. He doesn't go on and earn even more. And we do see him getting promoted to the Challenge Tour. And I think he's got the game when making the step up to the next level to really compete and kick on. OK, uh, aside from the top five, who else has caught your eye and impressed you who's just creeping in towards that? Well, it's always interesting. At this stage in the season, you've got guys that have accumulated a decent amount of money, but without winning. People like Brandon Robinson Thompson, Joe Brooks spring to mind. Ben Jones has had a couple of really good results as well. And we saw last year, Jamie Rutherford kind of did that, tiptoed along and didn't get that win until the Tour Champs. And suddenly he's top of the order of merit. For these guys that are in that position and playing consistently, just that one win and suddenly they're right there. But it's so competitive, you have to get a trophy. And Kit, aside from the top five, those at the other end uh, of the order of merit, those looking to get into the top 60, how important is that? Well, of course, coming into the season, everyone's thinking, I want to finish top five, I want to get my Challenge Tour card. But for some guys, that just won't have happened over the first few weeks of the season. They won't have made the start they wanted to. And now it's imperative that you do enough to get into the top 60, go to the Tour Championships at Loch Earn. Because anyone that goes there has a chance. If you win, you're likely going to get promoted, even if you're the last man in the field there. So it's important to keep with it, stay focused. And if you have had a bad start, you never know when that big result will come. It only needs one decent week to get yourself to that Tour Championship. And while you're there, you've still got hope. Well, thanks for that. And after an excellent 66 in the second round, Brandon Robinson Thompson has earned a real opportunity to build on the steady improvement he's been showing this year by claiming his first ever win. On eight under par, he leads by one from Scotland's Stuart McLaren, with Joe Brooks and James Wilson a shot further back. Scott Drummond and Simon Dyson know all about getting the job done in the final round. Great to be alongside them for this last lap at the Vale. Let's catch up with some of the early action then, and McLaren not the only Scott going well here. Michael Stewart's birdie at the long second, taking him to three under. Wilson not starting well though, he did get up and down from the bunker here at the opening hole, but only for bogey. Robin Williams in the same group, dropping two shots here. And after yesterday, 64, first hole troubles also for Joe Brooks. He started with a bogey as well to slip to five under. Thank you. 
Robinson Thompson did manage to par the first, but here at the next hole, he struggled to a bogey, taking six on a hole he'd eagled in the previous round. So by opening up par par, McLaren has moved into a share of the lead with Robinson Thompson. Three pars to start for John Ross Galbraith of Northern Ireland. I mean, he joins Wilson and Brooks in the group which follows them two shots behind. As we go out to the course with the new joint leader. McLaren here at the third. 194-yard par three. Sawn off follow through there, just trying to punch it in. Sort of leaked it a little bit. Oh, friendly bounce. He's been playing some nice golf though, hasn't he? This season. He has indeed. Absolutely. Several of these guys playing some lovely golf as we've seen over the last few weeks. The cut came at two over. Greg DL, who fell away after leading into the final round last week, missed by one. Mr. 59, Jack South, also just had a single stroke too many. Just James Wilson's tee shot there on the fourth. Didn't look like he held back on that one. Just gone down the left-hand side. Just worked its way into the rough. Shouldn't be too bad, though. The course is incredibly dry, as we can see. Now, Robinson Thompson back at the third. Can he find the surface? Eyeing that one down, might be a touch left, yeah. Catches that left bunker, I think. Will be a little bit awkward coming down the slope to that flag. Galbraith looking to make it back-to-back -back wins for Northern Ireland players after McElroy's success. Threading one through the trees there from the left side. Very bouncy as we've seen, and the greens have got some pace in them as well, Simon. Yeah, he's made a good job there. You know, Wart Hazard, front left. Yeah, he's done well to get that pin high. Now, Kit is out there with the final group, and they're at the third. Robinson Thompson bunkered for the second successive hole, and here it's all about the stance. He's off a really steep upslope. You can see the front of the bunker coming into play. He's going to be sort of something like this, but that has built the loft into the shot, and he's got a fair bit of green to work with, landing on that flat upper tier as well. Assuming he can get into a nice, comfortable stance, this is a pretty straightforward bunker shot to get up and down. All right, well, let's see if he can do exactly what Kit has just said. Stance doesn't look too bad. Looks like he's got in there quite solid. Popped it up really nicely. He's made that look very easy. He has, yeah. That was slightly awkward, and you add that extra layer of pressure early on in the final round, not wanting to drop one early doors. So all in all, that was good. Now, Wilson, second shot. Massive tee shot, we saw it, just scampering down the dry fairway. Safely on the putting surface in two. Yeah, looked like he only went in there with a mid to high iron, didn't it? Back to the third with Joe Brooks. This played the hardest of all the short holes over the two previous rounds. Very streaky player at the minute, Joe Brooks. You know, plays some unbelievable golf, doesn't he? It's so nice to see him finish one of these off and get the win. Yeah, like a lot of players at this level, it's about trying to string three rounds together. He's made a few late surges, and sometimes it turns out to be too late as he continues the pursuit of that first Euro Pro win. Wilson now. Up the hill, slow putt this for birdie. Well, he's left that one about four or five feet short. Going to be some work to do there. Well, coming into today, nobody had played the short holes better than McLaren this week. Looking to continue that here. Very good effort there. That was looking good most of the way. Galbraith, after that good shot from outside the trees. See if he can roll this one in. All about the pace up this slope. Just needed hitting. Line and length was just a bit off. 
Yeah, not a, not the easiest of pins to attack, I think, from that lower side. And as we, we've seen, the greens do have some speed in them, so as soon as you get an uphill putt, it can catch you out a little bit. No damage done, though. I was going to say, you're not losing much ground by making your fall there, are you? No, definitely not. James Wilson in his first year on the Euro Pro. This will be two bogeys in the first four. If he misses this one, oh, he didn't really get that close to it. Robinson Thompson now cleaning up, hopefully, after that superb effort from the bunker. Yeah, very well done. That'll settle down any, any nerves early on. Looking very dapper as well. So that means no change at the top as Robinson Thompson and McLaren both par number three to stay seven under. And five under is still next best, although Wilson drops out of that group after he bogeyed the longest par four on the course. Now Rachel's out at the fourth with Stuart McLaren. It's different from the last couple of days. The wind switched a little bit. So in terms of club selection, things like that, off the first few holes, it's actually changed a little bit. But no, it's the wind's it's not doing too much. It's a nice day, a lot more comfortable than it was on Tuesday, played in that 40 degree heat, heat in the Pro-Am. I know, we need a bit of rain, don't we? It's, it seems to have um, softened off a bit out here. It has, it definitely, like, the rain can hold off for the next four hours for sure, but after that, yeah, I think everywhere's screaming out for it just now, is it not? No, definitely. And how's the game plan for today? Uh, fairly similar, to be honest. You try and stay aggressive when possible. There's There are chances out here, but it's quite fiery, so you need to really keep the ball in play. Um, with the wind changing, might change a few selections later on, might get a little bit more aggressive um, on a couple of holes, but take it back a little bit on, on a few others. So we'll see what happens. And as McLaren bids to be our first Scottish winner this season, he's tied at the top with BRT. Welcome back to the Glal.uk Worcestershire Masters, where Stuart McLaren has moved into a share of the lead, having stopped for a word before teeing off. Stuart, you're a relatively late comer to the professional game by modern standards, so tell us how you decided to get into the pro ranks. Yeah, so when COVID happened, there was nothing to play amateur-wise, and I saw EuroPro Q School was coming up, and I was like, do you know what, I'm going to get my bash, I'll, I'll see what happens, no expectations or anything like that, and then came away with a full card and thankfully with the support of my sponsors and my work at the time I'm now sitting here and yeah doing living the dream I suppose. How have you found that transition into pro golf? It was tough at the start um, I kind of yeah got a bit of a reality check quite quickly um, missed first five cuts last year I was like oh, have I done the right thing but this year I've been I'm gonna say I've been consistent but I've not been able to put that third round together quite yet hopefully today's a new day but yeah it's, you improve every week um, you're playing with unbelievable players every single week and the standards getting better and better so you've got to improve otherwise yeah, you're not going to take that next step for sure. What's been the key to your good scoring this week? My, my putting has been huge I held my fair, fair share on on Wednesday um, in the afternoon um, and yesterday kind of it, it was hit or miss but I managed to grind it out um, you've got to put the ball in, ball in play around here that's so firm and you've really got to hit the correct shot shape to keep the ball on the fairway because the rough is a bit juicy it can can jump and with it being so fiery you could you could run off into the trees quite easily you mentioned firm and fast fairways the green's still quite receptive though psychologically how what kind of challenge does that pose knowing that you're going to get a lot of release on the tee shots but not so much on the approach it is tough but i think it just kind of puts like emphasizes how important the tee shots actually are because if you're on the fairway you can really get quite aggressive um, if you're in if you're in the rough though it's they're still going to come out of top spin and it might release the back edge but the greens are fantastic the course is in great shape um, although how firm it is it's it's a test for us and I think you can tell by the scoring just how challenging this week has been so far and it's all got a bit challenging for him today as this final round unfolds after those three pars to start he ran into trouble here at the fourth and ran up a double bogey six. Pavan Segu had two doubles in the first three holes, and yes, with this birdie on seven, he's back to only one over for the day. And after all pars over the first four for John Ross Galbraith, he needed this putt to keep that sequence going, so it's back to four under.
Robinson Thompson then finds himself two shots clear as a consequence of McLaren's misadventures at the fourth. The Scot now sharing second with Brooks, while Scottish pair Jeff Wright and Michael Stewart are both among the four-unders and now only three off the lead. Go out to the fifth, Robinson Thompson. Second of the par threes on this course, 160 yards. Should be taking dead aim from this yardage with not much breeze today. He's slightly disappointed with that one. Has been a hole in one on that hole this week. James Ashfield, the Welsh amateur who represents Delamere Forest. Nice to see Reese Nevin featuring this week. Really good player, good solid golfer. Been out in America, first year on Euro Pro. I expect to see some good things. Seen some good things from him today. He's four under for his round. Very nice playing indeed. Now here's Wilson at the sixth. His approach shot, lofting it high, front pin, not much room to work with. Just coming up a little shy there. That might be awkward, just gone into the edge of the rough. Galbraith now in all sorts of trouble here on six. Hacking it out of the long grass there. So hard to control on a firm course, hitting out rough that thick, isn't it, Scott? Yeah, it's one of your worst nightmares, really. You know the ball's got no control on it, and the ground is so firm. Right, after that lovely shot into 18, let's see if Reese can finish with a birdie. Always a nice way to finish birdie in 18. Oh, he's duly delivered. Joint winner of the Q School late last year. Nevin has made five birdies in a back nine of 32. It's a fine 67 for the Euro Pro newcomer, and it may well deliver his first top 10 finish. Wilson now just into the light rough here, and we're up against the collar. Come with a little chip and run. Played it very nicely. That was tricky. That should be a tap in part. I think when we first saw Robinson Thompson, we saw the hairstyle and the shirts, and sometimes you don't take players that seriously when they have that kind of image, but he's showing us more and more this season. He's got a lot of talent. Now the lad can really play. I've watched him quite a few times out on the course, and, yeah, he's got a lot of control of the ball. And like you say, you see the shirt, you see the trousers, the hair, but no, a very good player. Here's another one, and he must be feeling great at the moment, Pavan Segu. You see a lot of players who get their first win, they don't build on it. Well, he backed it up with another good week, and he's having another one now. And that birdie takes him to three under, back where he started the day, despite two double bogeys. In a rich vein of form, as they say. Now Galbraith, this for par, but be guaranteed he would be happy to get down in two from here. Down the slope, needs to release a little bit more. He's made a pretty good fist of it, though, from there. That was tricky. Robinson Thompson just finishing off here on the fifth. Shouldn't see this causing him too many problems. Yeah. Good par. Yeah, and good enough to keep him too clear of a group which now includes Jeff Wright, who's just taken two at the 11th to complete a hat-trick of birdies. Nevin's four under total can't be ruled out as the potential winning target. Now a bit of something different with Gabby. Right, guys, this is the 10 club challenge. Thank you. Taylor's caddied for me before. Who's going to go first then? That's the question. You go, come on, you show me the way. Oh. Rachel, pick a card, any card. Oh, she's gone for the tasty six iron. I, I probably need that one, 40. <laughs> this is probably perfect. You've got a result there. Does that get there? Nasty. <laughs> Tell you if what. If that gets there, oh, no way. Oh, you have got yourself a point. It's on next to the flag as well. Did you see Did you even hit the bottom? <laughs> Watch me pull putter after that. Ah, uh, you called it. The joker. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know where I've hit that out of, I've got to be honest. Ooh, the trusted eight oh, iron. That's, that's, that's actually my number. I've just got to not fat it now. You have as well. It's got to be bouncy. That could work. Bounce. This could be, this could be a white watch. Right, I need a good card here. Oh, 
Ooh, a five. I mean, it's not great, is it? Oh. Sit. Oh, sit down. Hit the flag. Hit the flag. It's the pitching wedge. Oh, that hurt. Right, door's open. He's mm, gone for the driver, but Willie oh, hit it off the deck. Oh, that's pretty good. It's lovely, TC. Two nil down, two shots left. <laughs> Please. Okay, it's your first test. This is your first test. Come on. Oh, crumbs. Oh, that, that <laughs> is it going to come round? That's a wide. Right, door's open. Nine. Oh, that's a well That's, a, that's a well that's You a can take one. that back, yeah. Oh, it's not bad. We're off the mark. It's OK. Mark. It's 2-1. It's Back getting tight. Down. He's got lucky. Seven. Oh, I've, missed, I've nearly missed it. Oh, kick, kick, kick. Stay on. Oh, oh. I've got away with it. To make it a bit spicy, can TC pick what club I've got you? Putter. It's got to be. It's actually got to be. Oh, that felt pure. It just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Well, thank you both guys for taking part in that. I'm the magician, you're the winner, you're the loser. Uh, but let's get back to the action. And let's take a look at this sixth hole, 448 yards, par four. You can see how dry it is and the fairway banks heavily from right to left. Driver or a fairway wood will release a long way down here. Bunker down there on the left at around 300 yards to be avoided. Turn the corner slightly and the approach shot in here. Just that one bunker set on the left side not even too close to the edge of the green, so plenty of room to work with. But you've just got to be careful with how dry and fiery these fairways are. So he's just trying to fire this down the right side, really, then, isn't he? Kind of make it move around that bunker. He's, but he's obviously just done that a little bit too much. Hit it too far down the right. He's found the long stuff. Good to see Galbraith playing well again. Clearly, very talented young man. Had an absolute shocker of a 2021. In 11 attempts, he only made one cut. Didn't even make it into the top 40 that week on home ground at Clandy Boy. But playing very nicely this season. A tidy approach there as well. Setting up a chance. Now, Robinson Thompson, he's found it, which is the first goal. Oh, and that's come out really well. Shouts of four, that's gone across the fairway into trouble on the other side now. Trouble for Brandon Robinson Thompson. Now McLaren in prime position here with his approach. Yeah, played it nicely. I think we spoke about the importance of hitting fairways. That just shows how important it is. You can actually control the ball into the greens. Greg DL there after missing the cut by one, staying on to caddy for his pal in the final round. Yeah, nice to see that, nice touch. Now Wilson here with his approach just from the semi-rough, leaked it slightly, and that's taken the slope away. Let's go back to number six with Kit. Just 81 yards for Joe Brooks here from the left-hand side of the fairway on six. But it's all about the lie and how brave he wants to be to that front left pin. He is in the rough. The grass is going with him. That will help. And he can get pretty clean access to the back of the ball. Contact will be decent, but no denying he won't be getting as much spin as he would do from the fairway. And with that front left pin, the only way he can really get it close is to pitch it short. Now that brings a bounce into play and we've seen a couple kick left and miss the green down there on the low side. The safer play is to pitch it on the green and just accept that it is going to release a bit and you'll be in the middle or the back third of that putting surface. It'll be interesting to see if he takes that safer option or tries to get one in close by landing it short. Yeah, I think he's in a pretty nice position here to hit it straight up the green. Two shots behind the leader. You know, 81 yards to go. I think he'd been look, looking to knock this one pretty close, Scott. Yeah, I think he's just lofted it as high as he can. There you go, just over the flag. Shot, mate. Safe shot there. Still giving himself a decent birdie opportunity. Well, let's have a look at David Langley, who's having a bit of a shocker today. He's four over for his round. Well, he's below the putting surface there by quite a margin. He's played that beautifully. Whoa, in for eagle. Yeah, it's only the second one there's been at the par 5 eighth all week. 
Wilson with the third shot here at number seven off the fairway. So be able to nip this one nicely, get a bit of spin. Just played a little bump and run up the bank. Judged, judged it very well. Short game being tested today. A lot of these guys. Now let's check in again on Robinson Thompson. This is where he's hit his third two. Really needs to get this up and down for a bogey. Damage limitation. Yeah, fine shot there. It is above the hole, though. It will be a little bit of a slippery one. Won't be able to be too aggressive with it. Got both for birdie after that lovely second shot in. See if you can make this to get to minus four. Yeah, lovely putt. Lovely putt. Never anywhere else. Yeah, I was talking about that terrible year he had last year. He actually had quite a few good rounds, but a tendency to throw in some big numbers along the way. He had a 77 at Clevedon, 78 at Parkwood, and even a 79 at Luton Who Just kept on doing the good work he was producing. Brooks now to get to six under. Just a little tentative down the hill. Not one he could really attack, that was it. Slippery. Oh, I'm done. What's the way with his par? Wilson now, just about three and a half, four feet for par. Yeah, confidently done. He's really showing how form can turn around so quickly. He had two rounds of 76 last week at Belton Woods and missed the cut by 10. And here he is contending. McLaren now to get to six. Oh, fantastic effort. That really would have applied some pressure to Robinson Thompson on his putt. Well, I know we talk about big moments in rounds and it's still early on, but you really don't want to be dropping two shots this early on. Big putt. And he stood up to it. Very good. Very good up and down there for bogey. Yeah, that was huge. And as a result of it, he stays out in front. But the lead down to just a single stroke now. Wright's run of birdies has ended with a par on 12. But at five under, who's to say pars in from there wouldn't be good enough to get it done for him. Whoever wins, it's great to be back at the Vale with our sponsors, Glal.uk, whose chief executive is Anthony Otway. Well, how much does it mean to you to sponsor an event like the Euro Pro Tour? I love it. I was a keen golfer years and years ago. I was a good junior golfer, but I never really wanted to be a pro. I didn't love it like these guys do. They eat it, drink it, sleep it. Fair play to them. They've got far more patience than what, than what, uh, than what I have, and I think I'd probably be riding a wooden bike if I was trying to do it. <laughs> How much do you know about this course? Have you played it before? Yep, over the, over the last 10 years, I uh, know Marco, the owner. He's a good guy. He's took it over, and yes, yeah, it's, it's getting better every year. But every year, and he, he loves doing the Euro Pro, and we've, we've backed him now for the last couple of years, and it's a winning team at the moment. OK, well, I know you've been following the leading group. What do you make of the standard here? I think people, if they, they haven't been to a Euro Pro event, they, they wouldn't believe how good these guys are. And the difference between here, the Challenge Tour, the European Tour, it's very, very close. But as a stepping stone, as a grinding, I think the Euro Pro is brilliant. Brandon Robinson Thompson has stumbled through the first six holes in a couple over par, but the overnight leader still has his nose in front. Hello and welcome back to the Glau.uk Worcestershire Masters. Time now to head over to Kit, who's found himself on the putting green. I'm down on the putting green with Joe Brooks, hot off of a, a course record tying 64. So the flat stick obviously working really, really well. I want to climb inside your brain and find <laughs> out about your approach to putting. So first of all, when you get to a tournament, what's the mindset with getting yourself calibrated to the new greens and getting your short game sharp? Yeah, I think that's... that's a a really important part part of the game and I think it's a really important part of the prep to prep for us every week mm -hmm. because you're going to go to greens that are different speeds different undulations how they break is a little bit different each week so um, I try and pick a left left to right part a right to left part and an uphill and downhill as well mm -hmm. just to kind of get my my brain understanding how much they're going to break I, I, I'm very much a feel player some of these guys use aim point 
Um, I can't really understand it because I can't feel anything in my feet really. So, um, so yeah, I do everything by eye. So the more putts I hit, the more the more comfortable I get. Uh, I feel uh, on the on the putting green. Let's take this hole here. Yeah. If we just chuck a ball down, sort of around about here, we got what ten feet. Yeah. So how are you approaching getting the correct read for this one? Um, so I'll always go. I, I, everything that I tell people to do is I always go to the low point in the green. Mm -hmm. um, from the low point in the green, you can see every break really that you mm -hmm. that, that you'd want round round the uh, round the hole. So I'd probably read it from the other side of the ball from from here, but we, we'll go from here at the moment. Well, no, so. you get yourself round the other side. <laughs> if that's how you do it, we'll make these cameramen earn their money. <laughs> so yeah, so I think from from the low point in the green, you can kind of see where where all the undulations are. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I can understand that this is this is going to be a little bit right to left, probably a little bit downhill as well. And in terms of your stroke, what do you do to maintain that through the season? You're on the road most weeks. Um, just just normal gate drills, really. That's all I do. And then pace control, something I, t I tell all the amateurs that if I play with them in the pro ams and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So anytime you're taking a practice stroke, I would always look at the hole. To, and that gauges the, the distance for me a little bit easier as well. Just imagine this is that par putt on the last that you just had to shoot that wonderful 64. Oh, as if it was going to go anywhere <laughs> else. Joe, absolute pleasure as always. Thanks for the insight. Some amazing tips that you can apply at home as well to improve your putting. Now let's get straight back out to the action. And this is where we left it with Brandon Robinson Thompson back to where he started the day, leading by one. Reese Nevin has posted a target at four under. Jeff Wright is looking to establish a better one. And look at Nick Marsh, birdie at the last would get him a 66 and a very genuine chance here. Right, let's take a look at the seventh, 403 yard par four. Pretty straightforward, to be honest. It's all about hitting the fairway, setting up the approach shot into this green with water on the left and a little bit short, but not too demanding a hole. Well, the players proved that over the first two rounds. It was the easiest of all the par fours. Indeed, the only one to average under four. Brooks out with a fairway metal. Just trying to find the fairway, like Simon said. Leave himself the best possible lie with a wedge into this hole. Done a great job there. L nice low ball flight, Joe, hit there. Just making sure that he hit the fairway, like Scott said. Talking a low ball flight, but that is not straight. Well, he's got away with it. Just about. That was not the plan. He actually finished up better than I thought it would. Normally, when someone's in the lead and just had a bogey, you'd say they're looking for a good response. But he'll actually be feeling pretty good about the fact that he got out of the sixth with a five after the troubles he was in. Yeah, no question. Retained his lead, which was all important. Is that going to hang on to the fairway? No, just into the semi. But not too much danger there. Now, Wilson at the eighth, par five. Approach with a wood from the rough, giving that a good old dig. Trying to get it up the bank. Just coming up a little bit shy. Nick Marsh has been really consistent this season. He's had four top tens already, including being runner up at Telford. But really, to get a challenge tour card, you've got to find a win somewhere along the way. And if he makes birdie here, this might be the day. Yeah, it's an outside chance. But you just never know. It's not an easy day today. Right, Pavan Sagu just missed the bunker to the right of the 10th. See if he can up and down it for his birdie. I think most guys will be birdieing this hole today. And just give himself a good chance. Now McLaren back on seven. We saw the tee shot not go to plan. Can he salvage something here? Little bit of a flyer, perhaps, but safely on the green. Now, a lot of good Scottish talent emerging on this tour in recent years, including this man, Michael Stewart. He's going along nicely today, out in 34, and he's just powered the 10th. Yeah, he's playing some nice golf, Michael, trying to capitalise on just losing out in the playoff a few weeks ago. But yeah, he's been playing some good golf. 
The leader now, Robinson Thompson, with his approach. We saw it just edged into the semi-rough. Decent angle in. Stay there. Just came out a little bit soft on him, perhaps, onto the front of that green. Right, I feel Joe can really attack this pin now. He's off the short stuff, he's off the fairway. You know, he can get this spinning around the hole. Nice firm bounce, checks it up. Yeah, very nice. Well, here we are on the eighth. Fourth shot of Galbraith. You can see just how far below the putting surface that is. Really difficult to judge. And that's a pretty good effort. He's still unaware of where it's finished. So Nick Marsh, you never know the way this is going. Five under would have a chance of a playoff, you would think, at least. And never really gave up much of a chance. And bogey on four was his only movement early on, but also his only dropped shot of the day. Marsh emulates Reese Nevin's round of 67 and his total of four under. Sagu so here looking to get to that score. Yeah, like I said, this is the whole... A lot of guys will be birdying today. And Pavan Sagu does exactly that. Four birdies in the last five holes. Looks so comfortable with that putter. He just sweeps those putts into the hole. Really, really good. Now Wilson, just short of this par five in two. Chip and run. That was looking good. That was on line. And it should set up his first birdie of this final round. Yeah, we saw Stuart McLaren coming out the rough. A little bit harder to control on the green, so he's run out, gone a little bit past. This is for birdie, but realistically, just looking to two-put this. Got the pace very good. Yeah, judged it well. Yeah, the applause well merited. He will stay one behind. Galbraith now, this for par, can't be dropping shots on the par fives and that's exactly what he's going to do, that's a real disappointment, got to definitely pick up your shots on the par fives, there's some tricky par fours and par threes out there. Yeah, when the course is playing as firm as it is, the par fives are playing more like par fours, aren't they? They definitely are not playing their length now, Stewart. Par 3, 11th. This for birdie. Oh, he looks a little bit bemused that that one went left at the hole. Nothing coming easily to Robinson Thompson at the moment. The only thing I'd say with that is no one's really making a move going up the leaderboard. They're all kind of falling away, so pressure's kind of off him a little bit. Wilson just cleaning that one up for birdie. But we'll see if Mr. Brooks can make that move and make a birdie here. This to get to minus six. Does it very well, played the hole perfectly. Yeah, perhaps that's the first application of pressure on Robinson Thompson. Well, Brooks' first birdie of the day cancels out the bogey with which he started and moves him alongside Robinson Thompson at six under. Another par for right at 13, so he stays one behind. Time to hear from our course manager here at the Vale, Mark Heath. Mark, what does it mean to host a EuroPro event at, at the Vale Country Club? Well, it's important for the club and, and the relationship that we have between the club and the EuroPro to bring them back year after year. But the alterations that we looked at around the golf course, which was the eighth, as well as bringing the water in around the seventh and the tenth greens, is for our members as well, because our members have been asking for years to bring the water in, make more use of it. So with the EuroPro playing last year, that gave us the incentive to go ahead with the scheme um, project work that we went for this year. So it will benefit our members uh, in the long term because 
that's what's important to any golf club is the members. Yeah, 100%. It wouldn't be possible without them. No, absolutely not. And they put up with a lot of disruption during the winter while we did all this work. And their patience, I can only thank them um, because it was tough for them at times, it was. So it's a, it's a collaboration, you're a pro membership and yeah. then you create, create yeah. something great. Yeah. So thank you, thank you. No, you're welcome. Now let's take a look at hole number eight, par five, 551 yards, 300 yards to the end of the fairway, keeping it short of that ditch, then turning the corner slightly, long approach, three wood into this green for most guys, trying to get it up the huge bank that is just short of this green. We've seen several guys down there and it's an awkward chip from way below the putting surface if you're down there. Brooks has got 108 yards for his third shot here and it plays really steeply uphill, probably 12 to 15 yards and it's such a shallow green as well. Absolutely imperative that he gets maximum height on this to get it stopping as quickly as possible. Never misses a chance to get his face in front of the camera, Joe Brooks. We've talked a number of times this season about the fact that he's been a runner-up three times on the Euro Pro, but that only tells part of the story about how often he's been in contention. He's had some thirds, he's had a couple of fourths, just keeps on knocking on that door. He does, and it's only a matter of time, you know, before it opens for him. Wilson now out of position on nine. Second shot. Couldn't quite tell if he was going over or under there. No, he's punched it under. Steady now. Got some pace on it. Just going to run through the back edge of the green. That just shows how firm and fast the course is there, because he pitched that good 40, 50 yard short. I've seen a lot of players have double bogeys on the early holes today. Well, Jack Hawksby was among those. He had a seven at the second, but then all pars until he just birdied the ninth. So he's out in 37. Yeah, really good birdie that on the ninth. And it looks like he's going to pick another one up here on the 10th. Exceptional approach shot that. Now Robinson Thompson, he's short of this eighth green, as we said, way below. Can't see anything, lofting it high. And we've seen a lot of guys with their approach just being a little bit too aggressive. It's always tough when you can't see the pin. You know, you, you trust in something that you can't see. As we see Wilson from the back of the ninth green. Playing a little bump and run down the slope. It's going to release down. Probably wasn't as quick as he thought that was going to be. No, and always difficult when you've seen your ball charge through the green at pace. And then you've got a chip back. Now Langley, this little chip and run, he'll be eyeing this one in for Eagle. He's played it nicely. It's online. Oh, absolutely robbed. That's some fat flags. <laughs> well, we heard it there. That was his thoughts. Fat flags kept the ball out. Now, Allen, second to 17 from the bunker. All about quality of strike out these fairway bunkers. Maybe just didn't quite get all of it there, come up quite a few yards short. Yeah, he was the winner of the opening event at Harleyford in May. Fourth in the order of merit coming into this, Alan, so big moments for him. Great chance to take huge strides towards his card for the Challenge Tour. And as we say that, Joe Brooks has made a complete mess of that. Yeah, that'll be disappointing for Joe. 108 yards into that pin. you will be looking to knock it pretty close. As we see Hawksby for his birdie to get to minus four. Yeah, which is where he started the day. Two birdies in a row for him. Wilson now. Long range chip and run, came up a bit short. This is just about nine or 10 feet for par. And that's disappointing. Bogey's sending you way down here. So bunched at the moment. Daniel O'Loughlin, one of the most exciting young talents out here on the Euro Pro, and he's been steadily improving as the season's gone on. Been top six in both of the last two events.
fine shot into this par three. 199 yards, and he's just a yard away. I don't think we'll see many better shots than that for the rest of the day. We'll see James Allen just short of the 17th, playing his third shot up the slope, up the tier, and just didn't quite get it. Bit of work to do for his par left there for James Allen. O'Loughlin now, after that fine shot in, can he convert and make birdie? He can. Excellent stuff. Another player moving right into it. Only two off the lead, which is currently jointly held by this man. This is for his par, though, on the par five. We just made a really nice birdie. Such a shame, so disappointing just to give it straight back on a par five. Alan now, we saw him in the bunker, we saw him short of the green. He's got to here. One good putt, can he make par? Yeah. He can, excellent work. A working par for sure. All right, Robinson Thompson for his birdie. Got a lot of fringe to come through here, so it could bobble a bit. Looks like it's rolled pretty good, but just hasn't got the pace. We'll tap that in for his par. Stay at minus six. So still not a birdie on the card of Brandon Robinson Thompson, but he's now back into the outright lead after that bogey on eight for Brooks. Wright still can't make any progress on five under after another par at the 14th. Now, before starting his round, we got the thoughts of Joe Brooks. Joe, 74 in the first round. Bounce back 10 shots better, tying the course record, 64 in the second round. What changed? Um, just a little bit of a change in mindset. Um, yeah, just uh, getting back to realising why I love playing golf and um, just love being out here, love competing, and um, took that mindset into into yesterday's round and, and here we are today. How much is a, a happy Joe Brooks a, a good golfing Joe Brooks? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think any time that you're happy and you're content with your, with your life um, away from golf, it, 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 definitely makes, it definitely makes a difference when you're, when, when you're out there competing. So, um, yeah, I would say that it's a massive thing for me. You didn't do so well at the Vale last season, obviously right in contention this year. Is there a case that sometimes courses suit your eye or you can just have a bad week and then you're obviously playing better this week? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's certain golf courses on this rotor that, that I do like. Um, coming here off of the back of last year, I wasn't feeling great about this golf course, but um, looking back on last year, I did a few things differently on maybe the weekend before. So um, maybe that's made a, made a difference. But yeah, I, I love the golf course out there. I think it's a good test. And if, if, if you hit good shots, you get rewarded. How do you assess your season to this point at about the midway stage? Um, it's been a good season. Um, me and my team always talk about putting myself in contention, um, which is something that I've done quite a lot this year. Uh, even if it has been late, late on a Friday that I've been, that I've been in contention. So um, it's good to get it. It's good to be in contention right now and hopefully we can get the, get the job done today. He's had a setback at the hardest par five on the course, but Joe Brooks is only one off the lead at the Glaldot UK Worcestershire Masters. It's event number eight at the Vale, taking us to the midway point of the PGA Euro Pro Tour, where the top five at season's end will graduate to the Challenge Tour. And an increasingly congested leaderboard has become more so after this tee shot on 11 set up birdie for David Langley. He's now just one off the lead. Joe Brooks parred the ninth to be out in 37, but calamity at the very next hole. A wretched double bogey seven, dragging him back to three under. Stuart McLaren had two double bogeys on his way to being out in 40, but he isn't out of this. Birdie at the 10th, recovering things to four under par. Which is now only a shot behind because Brandon Robinson Thompson had his third bogey of the day at the 9th to complete an outward nine of 39. He's now alongside James Allen and Jeff Wright at five under. So many players now just piling up 
at four. And here's one of them. Yeah, McLaren. Par three, eleventh. Seen a couple of really good shots in here. Can he find one himself? No, he can't, is the answer. Short and right there. Robinson Thompson now really needs to get something going to ignite his final round. Very hard to lose a lead, but he's got nine holes left. And he's found the surface there. That'll be a long range outside birdie chance. Well, let's have a look at the long par 3-14th, playing 258 yards. It's 241 yards to the front, so it's a long one. Got a couple of bunkers short of the green. Green's only 24 yards wide as well, so not the biggest target. So it's a really good test. And this is Ben Jones, who represents Northamptonshire County Golf Club. He's been a runner-up twice on the Euro Pro Tour already this year. Long iron, working it in from right to left. Just overcooked it. And that's going to be very, very awkward to that pin, which is tight on the back today. What can Stewart do? Long iron as well. Again, looks like he's trying to work it in from right to left. That looks like it's set off on a bit better line than Ben Jones's. Yeah, found the middle of the green. Oh, even better than that. Just we're going to run off the back. Really good shot there from Michael. Stuart McLaren. We've seen so many really low rounds on the Euro Pro this season. He had a 63 at Telford on his way to finishing fourth. His only really good showing so far, but on course for another one today. And that's not bad. I was going to say, when the guys started clapping, I thought that must have been sat pretty poor, and it was. You see James Allen's approach into the final hole for him. Just pulled that one a bit, been a left-hander, added a bit of distance, outside chance though. And an outside chance still for someone like Jones to win this. Three under currently, but you clearly can't really afford any more bogeys if that chance is to stay alive. He's in danger of one here, or at least he was. He's gone totally the other way. It's a birdie. He gets to four under and he's only one off the lead. Crazy game. Quite incredible from there. I mean, you could hear that shot. He, was, he got a good lie, but... You could hear when it landed how firm the ground was. So to judge that so beautifully, special stuff. Now, Robinson Thompson, long range birdie, like we said. Can he get his round going? No, he can't. Just on me. No real danger, though. Two and a half feet should be a safe part. Michael Stewart beaten in a playoff at Cumberwell Park in June. Leaves his short as well. Oh, I, to 12 I mean, if that had gone in, we'd have seen two twos on probably the hardest hole on the course. Now let's go out to Rachel on the home green. We're here on 18 with James Allen's golf ball. He's got a bit excited. He's missed the tier and he's got this long, probably about 40 footer downhill. It's going to fall left on us. He's got a good chance to post the number leader in the clubhouse. Let's hope he can get away with a four, post the five under, and we'll see what happens with the rest of the guys out there. All right, well, let's see if it does exactly what Rachel said. She said it's going to fall a little bit to the left, back down towards the front of the green. I think looking at 40 footer, realistically, he'll be very happy with a two putt. Mm, four or five feet left there. Yeah, he'll definitely be happy with a two putt now. That bit of work to do. Such exciting times for Pavan Sagu. He's playing well here for the third week in a row. He's getting married around now as well. Yeah, it's all happening for the young man. Well, that's a fine shot in there. A little bit unlucky not to just get up onto that back tier. But this very long par three, I'm sure he'll take that now, Alan. This to post the clubhouse lead at minus five. Oh, nicely done. Five, six start, meant two shots went straight away for him. But what an effort to play the rest of the course in seven under. 67, by far his best round of the week. And five under par is now the mark. 
as we now see Pavan Segu putting up the slope on 14. Like we said, three is a very good score on this hole. It's got an outside chance of birdie as he hit it. No, well judged though. I think he'll take his three. He's not losing any ground on the field there. He's in a great vein of form at the moment. He'll be trying to keep that going as long as he can. I'm trying to steal another win, obviously. Now McLaren. That's a good roll. Oh, just burns the left edge. That would have been a tremendous pass save. Yeah, he'll go back to three. James Allen, though, has posted the target at five under. And Kit is talking to him. Nice little round of 67, five under par there. How do you feel that all went? Yeah, I'm really pleased. I got off to a, a bad start. I hit a few, I hit a bad tee shot down the first and the second and um, put myself behind the eight ball straight away. But I managed to get a few putts to go in um, and kind of turn the round around pretty quickly after that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. I've struggled in final rounds really all season. I haven't had a good, well, obviously, Harleyford, I managed to get it done. But since then, I haven't shot a good score. So I'm pleased with that. Yeah, you started bogey bogey. What did you have to do mentally to turn it around? Honestly, I, I made like a 15, 20 foot on the third for birdie. And I think that kind of lifted my spirits a little bit because I hadn't held anything the first two days at all. Um, so to see something go in kind of gave me a little bit of a G up and, um, and followed it up with some good shots and yeah, build it from there. So James Allen must now hope Jeff Wright doesn't get the closing birdie, which would take Allen out of the running. Nevin and Marsh are now eliminated, but all the other names you see there still right in the thick of it. The final round at the Vale. And here is Jeff Wright, huge moment for him and for a number of other players as well. This would get him in at six under. Just coming through the fringe, down the hill, he's giving it a chance. Oh, painful, just about six inches short. Twice a Euro Pro runner-up already in his career. That putt might just have been to clinch his first win. So it's seven straight pars to finish his 68. Five under means Wright is tied for the lead as he finishes. I wonder what Kit and Gabby make of it all. This must be the craziest final round we've probably ever seen on tour. It's absolutely insane. I don't know where to look. I don't know who to follow. There are so many guys in with contention. And also, the leaders, they're over par, but most of them are closer to the lead than where they started. Joe Brooks being the, uh, the obvious example. Brandon Robinson Thompson came in as the leader, three over par, but he's still tied for the lead. And of course, we've now got those two clubhouse leaders in Jeff Wright and James Allen, who we've just seen finish here on 18 in it five under par. James Allen couldn't believe it when I went to interview him after the round and uh, was shocked that he's tied for the lead. But they're right in it. I mean, they could be in a playoff. Someone from the pack, there's any one of probably 10 or 12 guys who could still win this and pull away. But we've seen scoring isn't easy. You have to hit the right shots at the right time. Someone will win this today, but I've got no idea who it's going to be. Exciting stuff all round. Now let's take a look at the 12th hole, par four, 421 yards. Looks pretty wide from this angle but the fairway banks heavily from left to right. Got to keep it up the left side to try and have a chance to stay on this fairway. A good tee shot down into here leaves less than 100 yards to the front of this green, expecting guys to attack this pin and try and make another birdie if they can. As we see Robinson Thompson down the right hand side, like Scott said, fairway banks heavily left to right. So you're going to see a lot of guys in that right rough coming over that front bunker which he hasn't managed to do. I think that'll be a very popular spot today. What a crazy day for David Langley. Teed off at four under, slumped to level par early on, but through all sorts of adventures, he's made it all the way back to four under again. Yeah, he's battled really well. You know, you can let your head fall, feel sorry for yourself, but he's done the opposite and he's clawed it back nicely. And a pretty decent tee shot in there on this 14th as we see Hawksby's attempt. In his second season on the Euro Pro, he marked his first with a win at East Sussex National around this time last year. That's a quality shot as well. It's a very, very long par three, as we've said earlier. Doesn't look it from that angle, but it is. Now here's Brooks. He's almost found the fairway, long way down. He's got to loft it in over that front bunker with a bit of control on it. And that's what he's done. 
Yeah, just tried to add a little bit more spin there, feed it in from the left-hand side. He's done a great job. And we saw the approach of Hawksby. This is to go into a tie for the lead, but it would be a good two-put from here, to be fair. I mean, for a hole that's playing 250, 260 yard plus, that's not the easiest pin position either. Yeah, no surprise from that position to see him come up a good bit short. So Langley, as I said, got off to a really bad start today. Now has this to go into a tie for the lead himself. Go. Go. Again, still a slow putt coming from that angle. Like Jeff Wright in at five under. He's telling Rachel how he did it. And the leaders were at seven or eight under, so I thought if I had to win, I'd maybe have to shoot 10 under. I wasn't even thinking about it, to be honest. I was just trying to put a good round together and glad that I did that, yeah. Process, process, process. Exactly, one shot at a time, all the cliches. Do you think it could be a chance for a playoff, or do you think the leaders might grab um, a few? I'm not sure. I mean, 16's playing easy, 17's playing tough, 14's playing tough, par three, so there's chances, and there's chances for bogeys out there as well. So I'm, I'm not sure. I, I won't think too much about it. I'll, I'll just wait and see what happens. All right, so that's two players in on five under. This man is still at that score. He's battling well. Yeah, he played that really well. It was all on the lie, that. If he had a poor lie there, I don't think he had much chance, but he played it really well. Hawksby now at 14. Can he clean up? Another one slides by with still a bit of work to do on that one for a bogey. Now Sagu up ahead at 15. His approach is coming out of the light rough. Lofting it in and getting the control. Fantastic shot there. Well, I mean, that came down with snow on it, didn't it? You know, but he got the spin as well out that rough. As we see Langley tidying up on 14. Like I say, make three on this hole. You're not losing any ground. Oh, and we don't like to see those. They hurt. Yeah, all oh, that work to turn it round after the wretched start he made, and then something like that happens. Not out of it. But he's going to need a really big finish now. He'll need to play the last four holes in two under. Yeah, giving shots back by three putting in the late stage of a tournament is not good. Now, Sagu, can he find one? Just hung out on the right edge. That was looking good. I thought he'd started that on a great line. The players will be thinking these holes are getting a little bit smaller on the last day. As we see Brooks trying to make his birdie on 12. This will get him to minus four. Oh, and just crept the left side, but it's in. Goes to minus four, Joe Brooks. Yeah, and with that, he gets back to within a shot of the lead. James Allen still in it then after Jeff Wright couldn't convert his birdie chance on 18. A miss which also kept Robinson Thompson from falling behind. Still so many players for whom just one more birdie could mean so much. Any advance on five under? Brandon Robinson Thompson has six holes left to beat that target and perhaps claim his first Euro Pro win. It's been a season of so many first time winners on the PGA Euro Pro Tour and Brandon Robinson Thompson had dreams of being the next when he started this final round at the Vale as outright leader. Brandon, 10th in the order of merit. Really nice going so far this year. How do you assess how it's gone? Um, quite pleased, just been putting myself in good positions. Uh, slower starts in the first rounds, but just kind of building on it and just building momentum throughout the weeks. And yeah, just staying patient and doing similar things every week, really. What have you learned from getting yourself into contention a bit this year? It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's something to be said about being in contention and the feelings and I don't know, I just, there's a sense of excitement and fun when I'm doing it and um, it's the best way I can really describe it, yeah. What do you think of the layout here at the Vale? Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Obviously, we've turned a couple of par fives into par fours, which, which is really good. The course flows really well, actually, since they've done that. Obviously, it's very firm and fast and the greens are soft. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but 
good shots take care of a lot of that. A few years ago, you played over in South America. What was that experience like? Amazing. Uh, highly recommend it to any pro, really. Obviously, it was a little pricey, but um, you really do learn how to be a prof professional out there. You fly every week. You're playing in some incredible places. I never would have flown to Guatemala or even, you know, Ecuador, Peru, those sort of places. Um, unbelievable experience. You're in the lead going into today, so what's the approach? Very similar stuff, mate. Um, again, discipline, patience and focus. That's what we're working on right now. And what would it mean to you if you got the job done and ended today with the win and the trophy? That's why we play. So, it would mean a lot. You played well this week. Good luck. Thanks tonight. very much, Kit. Appreciate it. And despite being three over for his round, having not made a birdie all day, Robinson Thompson is still dreaming of the title. With five to play in the Glaldot UK Worcestershire Masters, he's joint leader with James Allen and Jeff Wright, who are both in the clubhouse and looking on with the greatest of interest. Joe Books at the demanding 14th, having just made his birdie. See if he can capitalise on it. Just wants looking to find the green here, I think. Oh, he got a severe bounce there. Just caught the firm right hand side. Tough second shot. Ireland's Stuart Grehan represents Tullamore Golf Club in County Offaly, which is very much Shane Lowry country. Approach to this par five. Towering iron shot. And what a great shot that is. Stopping very quickly. Great eagle opportunity coming up for the young man. Feels like just about everyone still out on the course has a chance to win this. Robinson Thompson, born and raised on the Isle of Wight. He's been playing since the age of nine. Started at Freshwater Bay Golf Club. That's the sort of club name that makes you want to play golf. It certainly does. And seeing types of shot, shots like that makes you want to play golf as well. What a fantastic iron that was. Yeah, the 14th hole definitely to get through with no damage and he has a chance for birdie michael stewart has got to make birdie at the last if he's to have a chance of that breakthrough win today look at that one bounding on round the corner that's in prime position now for his approach Sagu just looks like a man who's had a huge weight lifted off his shoulders when he won at abridge he played just about as well as anyone's ever played on the euro pro He's shown everyone now what a good player he is, how much talent he's got, and he's just gone on from there. He really does. His emotions are very calm now, aren't they? You know, it just looks like he's playing stress-free golf and he's actually enjoying it. Wilson now at 15 for birdie to get to three under. Should move a little from his right. Here it comes. Has he hit it? He has. Just crept in the right side there. Big moment then for Stewart. Tee shot really couldn't have gone any better. Up and down from here to join that group at five under in the clubhouse. Yeah, we've seen a few guys knock it quite close here on 18 and make some birdies, and Michael Stewart's done exactly that, and he's got a great chance to finish off the day at minus five. Well, now, Joe Brooks was talking earlier about how he's had some big finishes, but it's come a bit too late. Now, this is a situation where he got himself into a position to win, needs a big finish. This isn't what he had in mind. It isn't, but he's done a really good job from where he was there. Damage limitation. Again, you want to keep the double bogeys off. You see how thick that rough is. He's going to come down pretty steep on that. It just pops out nicely. Played that really well. So back to Sagu, who can more or less wrap up his Challenge Tour card, go top of the order of merit if he gets another win today, and this would put him in a tie for the lead. Just a little from the left, and he didn't quite read it. It was a positive putt, just a misread. Stewart to finish up on 18. Can he make his birdie to get to minus five? Mm, quite a tentative putt there from Michael. Oh. I think he'd be quite disappointed with that, but still a very good day and all. Yeah, in terms of winning, his race has run now. 
He got things moving with consecutive birdies at seven and eight. Ten pars in a row from there was a decent effort, but by one stroke at least, not quite good enough. Yeah, just needed something to happen. Now Brooks, the best he could have done from that rough was give himself a chance to save par, and this is what he's done. Needs to be firm. Well, it was a bold effort. But it is going to be a shot gone. Agree, and what an opportunity this is to all of a sudden find himself tied at the top. Well, another one just edges away from the hole here on 16. Seems to be a bit of movement, whichever angle you're coming at this hole. A lot of close calls, but nothing dropping. He knows that was a fantastic opportunity gone there. And here's another fantastic opportunity. Robinson Thompson for birdie on 14 after that beautiful tee shot. Just didn't get the turn he thought there was there. You just feel he's maybe getting closer to getting that elusive birdie now. Earlier on, it was a bit more of a struggle. He was battling for his pars. Starting to find a little bit of rhythm towards the finish. He's going to have to find a birdie somewhere, though, in the four remaining holes if he's to avoid a playoff. As we come to the 15th, par four, 403 yards. You've got a couple of ways of playing this. Lay up short of the bunker at 275, or you can take it on and feed it into that gap, leaving you about 85 yards to the front. You've got a two-tier green, but it's a really good birdie chance coming down the stretch. Joe Brooks has been so consistent this season. He's played in every event, only missed one cut. He's got through to the final round in all of his last five tournaments and not been any worse than 12th in any of them. That's remarkable consistency at any level. Aggressive shot in there. Slightly firm bounce. Just onto the back fringe now. Sagu from the trap on 17. Needs really good contact to get this all the way up onto the putting surface. Looks like he's done it. Almost. He's going to be a treacherous putt from there. Robin Williams started the day three off the lead. He's three over par for his round, and he's still three off the lead. And that will get him a stroke closer. A couple of birdies to finish, and he could be the winner. Green's been close on this tour before, runner-up at Frilford Heath behind Scotland's Paul O'Hara four years ago now. This 17th hole proving tricky. That's his approach in there. That's his third shot in there. He's got that to save part. Pin all the way at the back of this long green today. Played it nicely, though, with that two tiers to play up. See Joe Brooks from just at the back of the 15th. Be pretty aggressive with this. Just got a bit too much check there. Should tidy that up for his par, though. Now, here is a very long-range putt from Sagu on 17, just on the fringe. Giving it a good old whack, getting it up that tier. And he's overcooked that one, actually. Wow, that's going to leave about 18 feet for par. Most unlike the play we've seen from Sagu of recent weeks. Robinson Thompson with his third. It's for birdie. Looks like it's just rolling down the slope. Got it rolling oh. nice. You could see the line going end over end. Hit a really good putt there. And again, you just feel he's getting closer and closer to finally making a move in the right direction. Yeah, they're burning the hole now. He just needs to remain patient, keep giving himself chances. Now, Sagu, can he salvage par here? Firm up the slope. Ooh. That means that he would now need to hold his second at the last. Yeah, costly mistake on the penultimate hole. Now, Grehan. Lovely chip and run up to here. Can he save part? Just tried to sneak away from him, but he got enough of the right edge. 
So Grehan's up and down on 17, means he can still win here, but that hope will be gone if he doesn't birdie the final hole. Robinson Thompson has now had six pars in a row, three more, and he'd most likely be in a playoff without having made a single birdie in the final round. As we go to Brooks at the longest hole on the course. Yeah, it's a good par five, this 574 yards, but they're reaching it in two, you know, nice firm fairways. See if Joe Brooks can manage to manipulate it out of those trees. Looks like he got a pretty good strike on it. Ah, oh, it's a fantastic shot from there. You know, if that was lying okay, it wasn't too much of a demanding shot, but he's still done really well to control that. Great outside chance of eagle. Sagu so now on the tee at 18. Can he do the first part right? Working it right to left. Has he overcooked that? Perhaps a little bit, but it's feeding through now. Stay up. Well, we'll have to see. He should have an opportunity there to attack the flag. Try and make a closing birdie that he desperately needs. As we see Wilson on the very demanding 17th. Seen a few guys in that left-hand bunker off the tee. Looks like he's just trying to feed it off that bunker. He's done a very good job of that. He could not walk up and place that in a better position. We are here on 16 with Brandon Robinson Thompson's golf ball. He's found the fairway. He's got 2-3-1 into the par five. Slightly downwind. He's got loads of room right, water left. But if he just nudges one up the right, gets up and down or manages to hit the green, he's got a great chance of making birdie and taking an outright lead into the final few holes. Yeah, this could prove to be a key shot here in the closing holes. A really good long iron, set up the birdie, make that move ahead of the pack. Go on, chase on. That's a very, very good effort onto the front of the green. He's been waiting all day for a birdie, as we've been saying. He might still be waiting after this hole because that is for Eagle. Yeah, is it a couple of beautiful long iron shots in the last few holes? Nice little appreciation of the shot there from Joe Brooks as well. Wilson now, his approach into 17. It was a great tee shot. Hand off the club, perhaps leaking a bit. No, just coming up a little short. Decent effort. It's been a much better day than he had earlier in the season at Studley Wood when he'd put himself in decent position going into the final round and then collapsed to an 80. Handled it much better today. Pavan Sagu just drawing one in there, trying to use the slope. Seems to suit his eye, that little draw. And it probably looked good in the air, just come up a little bit short. Still pretty good effort from there. Green looks like he's got to do exactly the same if the trees aren't interfering with his backswing. Didn't look like they were. Has he got the draw and the control on that one? Yeah, pretty good effort from there. You know, anything on the dance floor, be happy with. Nice to see a good turnout here at the Vale. Wait till we get to Clandyboy in a few weeks. We'll Massive crowds there, certainly did last year. A BRT looking to eagle this hole for the second time this week. This will be the biggest moment of the tournament if it goes in, but he knew early on, didn't he, that it didn't have a chance. Still, though, that's going to be his first birdie of the day. He'll have played that hole over the three rounds in four under. Sagu now trying to close out with a birdie to get to four under. Go on, give it enough. Oh, that was a very good effort. It's another solid week for Sagu, though. He was three over for the round through three holes, but he hit back really well. Still had a chance of winning until that bogey at the 17th. He is set, though, for his third top 10 finish in a row after a closing 72 for Pavan Sagu. He makes the game look very simple, just keeps it all simple. See, Wilson, after his second shot, like Scott said, the hand came off the club, but it was straight down the pin. Can he roll this in for his birdie? Yeah, and he does. We, don't, we haven't seen many of those today. Birdies on the 17th. Great putt there from James Wilson. 
No change in the facial expressions. Keeping the game face on, now Grian. Long range birdie attempt to join the guys at five under. Little right to left and he's left it short. That's a disappointment on the final hole. He thought that was gonna be quicker. Just about two and a half to three feet. Little tester, tester of the nerves. Yeah, well done. We had a winner from north of the border last week, not a winner from south of the border this time round, but he gave it a really good go, didn't he, Stuart Grehan? Emerging towards the finish, playing very solid stuff. A round of 70, just one too many at least. See Joe Brooks here for Eagle. After that beautiful shot out the trees, I feel like he really feels like this should go in. If he's going to have a chance, fantastic Eagle there. Saw the fist pump said it all. And all of a sudden, Brooks has another great chance of getting that elusive first win on the Euro Pro Tour. One more birdie in the two remaining holes and he can knock Allen and Wright out of it. Wilson still has a chance if he makes something happen at the 18th. We spoke with him before the off today. James, great playing this week. It's your first season on the PGA Euro Pro Tour. How are you finding it so far? No, it's good. Fitting, fitting in quite well. Um, first few events, slow up with blocks, but we're getting there now, yeah. Good. Is there anything that surprised you about it? Um, to be honest, I mean, more so than anything, all the guys are just very friendly. You know, I'm at a golf, it's a little bit segregated. Um, but yeah, you're all in the same boat. You want exactly the same thing. So it's, it's very, very enjoyable. Uh, really like me time. Yeah, yeah, it's good. How did you first get into golf? First get into golf? Funnily enough, it was my auntie and uncle. Um, got relatives over in Canada and they came over for a six week holiday at the time when, uh, when I was at primary school. Um, as a little break, they took, they took us a golf and that was it, it just stuck. <laughs> did you immediately think, oh, I love this game, or did it take a little bit no, of time? No, it took a little bit of time. I mean, big Newcastle fan, so I, I was mad keen about football at the time. Um, took a little bit, went out with my dad at Longhurst, um, and then just, it just stuck, yeah. Joined Close House, went to Tyneside from there, so yeah, just stuck. How special is it to be able to do something that you truly love as a living? Yeah, it, it means the world. I mean, you know, a, a lot of people work for a living, but to do this for a living and, you know, enjoy yourself and you're in the outdoors, you're traveling, traveling the world, really. Um, it, it's absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. It's taken 16 holes, but Brandon Robinson Thompson has finally made his first birdie of the day. Two pars to finish, could get it done. Welcome back to a gripping final round of the Glaldot UK Worcestershire Masters, where five players still have a great chance to win as the final group arrives at the penultimate hole. Brandon Robinson Thompson has the best chance of all. After a long awaited birdie at the 16th, James Allen and Jeff Wright both need him to drop at least one shot. Joe Brooks and to a lesser extent James Wilson can still control things themselves. Let's take a look at this 17th hole, par four, 487 yards, teeing off across the water. Up to the corner, bunkers here have been a popular spot today, keeping it away from that copse of trees on the right. If you can skirt it past the bunkers at 310, it sets the hole up beautifully, and then it becomes pretty straightforward and pretty simple. You can attack the flag into this green. A couple of bunkers, but the guys would be going in with a short iron, perhaps even a wedge, so, Again, all about the tee shot on this hole to set up a birdie. And here is Robinson Thompson on that hole. See if he can kind of feed it off that left bunker, like Scott said, keeping it away from the trees down the right. Looks like he's done a really good job there, working it from left to right. And that's exactly what he needed with two holes to go. Just going to feed back onto the fairway. Yeah, that's a great tee shot, under the pressure, coming off a birdie. He's done just what he needs. Now Langley, this for a closing birdie to finish on three under. Similar spot to where James Allen was, but he's read it beautifully. What a way to finish. Yeah, what an eventful day it's been. Four shots gone early on. He had an eagle, he hit the flag when he was threatening another one. Couldn't quite keep it going to the finish. 
73, though, means he's heading for a top 10 result. Yeah, always a solid week. Top 10 finish. As we see Wilson. Tee shot on 18. Just working it round the corner, not being too aggressive. Finding that fairway, all important. If Robinson Thompson does win, you know, it won't have come out of the blue. He had a very solid rookie season on the tour last season. Missed a playoff by just one stroke at Manning's Heath. He's already been in the top ten three times in 2022. It's all been leading to a moment like this. Yeah, that sounded a really nice, sweet strike, that. It's done really well. Left himself a pretty easy put on that green. More from Kit now, out there with that final group. What an eagle from Brooks on 16. It's reignited his challenge and catapulted him just one off the lead of playing partner Brandon Robinson Thompson himself with a fine birdie there. And he has smoked one down the middle here on this brutish 17. It's a long par four. He's now got 174 yards left and that pin dead in the center of the green from left to right, perched up there on the back tier. The way he's feeling, I wouldn't bet against him sticking this one up and giving himself another great look for birdie. And here is Brooks, like Kit said, set up the tee shot. He's looking straight down the green now. Aiming left, looking to probably just feed it in. And I think he's just hit that dead straight. And he has gone a little bit long. Needs to sit. Slight misjudgment there from Joe Brooks, I think. Yeah, he's absolutely flushed that one, hasn't he? Looking to play perhaps a soft cut. And he's just absolutely nailed it. Galbraith faded out of things a bit. He had four bogeys and five holes at the end of the front nine, and he hasn't been able to really get back into contention. It's a wonderful iron shot in there over the flag. See Wilson here, similar shot in. You know, they've all put an emphasis on hitting the fairway because they know that they need the spin hitting into the green, even if it does just leave them a little bit further in. So Wilson's just let that one slide a little bit to the right, straight down the green. Shouldn't cause him too many problems, that one. Yeah, but he did need to get up and down from there to still have a chance, so unless he can pull off a miracle on 18, his race is going to be run as well. This man's still battling away. He is. He's trying to find a way to get it done. But he's given himself plenty of work. I think he was hoping for a firmer bounce there. It was bang on line. Now here is Wilson opting to chip it from the fringe. Quite slow across here as it gets to the hole. Loses momentum. Well, he's made a pretty good job from that sort of range. So, waiters, until the 16th hole for a birdie, is it going to be two in a row? Like I said, pretty straightforward putt. A little bit of a door breaker, broke a little bit to start with and then went a little bit to the right midway. But still a really good effort, rolls the ball beautifully. Now here, Galbraith. Can he close out with a birdie, get to three under? Down the hill, left to right. Very positive putt. Well, so much went wrong for him coming towards the turn, and he couldn't do enough after that to really get back into things. 74, clearly a disappointment, but it'll be his third top 10 on the Euro Pro this season. And Wilson now, just to close out with his par, finish four under for the tournament. Yeah, it's at least one too many. Two under for the last four is a strong finish, but not strong enough to undo what had gone before. It will still be, however, his best Euro Pro result to date by far. Shot behind. Two holes to play. This really needs to go in to stand any chance. Has it gone that way? Yeah. Looks like he just misread that one a little bit. Just, I don't think he think it was going to go right, but he tried to be firm with it. But it just moved. Shame off such a good tee shot to walk away with a five there. Two shots behind now. 
Yeah, Brandon Robinson Thompson has had his struggles today, but he seems to have got better and better as this back nine has gone on, and he will board the 18th tee with a one shot lead. We've got the 18th, par four, 437 yards, not playing its yardage at all. Get the ball working right to left off the tee, you can get it down there, good 300 yards, even with a three wood. Leaves you about 115 in to a front left pin. And you're seeing a lot of guys using the slope on the green to work it into that pin. Good birdie chance. And yet it played the hardest hole on the course over the first two rounds. Yeah, surprising, isn't it? Perhaps with the wind blowing or whatever, but Robinson Thompson just needs a solid one off this tee, and it looks like he's got it. Yeah, he has. It's just sneaking down the left side. It's just going to be a popular spot down that left side, isn't it, with the fairway sloping so much right to left, but he's done the hardest part there. Yeah, and that wasn't what Joe Brooks wanted to see, was it? Because he needs to make a birdie and hope that BRT slips up. Yeah, imperative for Brooks. Got to give himself a chance. Leaked it a touch to the right. Asking for it to hang on. Yeah, stopping short of the long stuff. He'll be okay there. Now we can find out what the leader is facing on the final hole. Well, it's all come down to this moment. Brandon Robinson Thompson has found the fairway on 18 and he's leaving himself 113. He's got a slight back step behind that flag. If he just finds middle of the green, makes that birdie putt, he's going to lift his first title. He's worked all his whole life for this moment, and I can't wait to see it happen. But here is Brooks first, coming from the right rough. Be lovely to see him get a good iron shot in tight here, finish with a closing birdie. He's got a blind view. He's worked that one in. Fantastic shot from there. few weeks short of his 30th birthday, it's the biggest swing of Robinson Thompson's life so far. Yeah, positioned it so well off the tee. Is it just a formality? It looks like it now. Stunning second shot in there. It's the way you dream of getting your first win. Nice to see those crowds with the final group. Really well supported event here by the members. Yeah, really well supported. It's like you said, it's nice to see. But they're watching some really good golf as well. Can Brooks finish with a nice birdie? Yes. Ah, great to see. Great to see. Three shots gone and three holes around the turn. Eagle at 16, holding back into it, only for Brooks to follow that with bogey at the next hole. Yet another strong week. But the long wait for a win goes on. Not for this man, though because Brandon Robinson Thompson has closed the sale at the Vale. Struggled all the way out, but steadied things sufficiently after that for his big finish to really count. Only two birdies today, but they both came in the last three holes. So he's the winner of the Glaldot UK Worcestershire Masters, and he even had a bit to spare at the end. Alan comes up just short of becoming the first multiple winner of the season. He shares second with Wright and Brooks, two behind your champion, who we'll hear from now. Brandon, you've just secured the oh, title. What yeah. are your emotions right now? I mean, I, I wasn't quite sure, and my caddy asked me, do you want to know the situation, or do you know? And I said, the situation is whole another putt. And so I just still, I guess I won by one or two, I don't know. That closing birdie meant it was a win by two in the end. Okay. Oh, so I could have two putted from three <laughs> yeah. feet. Okay, great. But no, awesome. Um, makes it even better, my best friend, caddy, manager, all the above with me this week, just unbelievable, mate. And you had to wait until the 16th for your first birdie of the day. Were you surprised that, given that, you were still right there tied for the lead at the a time? A little bit. I snuck a look of a leaderboard on, like, 12 or 13, and I was 500 at the time, tied for the lead, and I was like, OK, well, I guess the front nine didn't... I didn't let it get away from me too much, so... Um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but at the same time, I'm just out here trying to shoot the lowest score I can. You were gunning for birdie on the last. You didn't know you could only get a par, yeah. but you knocked it in tight. You yeah. hold the birdie in front of these great yeah. crowds as well. How good does that feel? Amazing. Honestly, I, again, I didn't know what I was at. I figured I needed a birdie to win or something. I just knew I needed to hit good shot. I'm just ecstatic to hold out.
for Birdie in front of all these people at such a great club and with such great members, so thanks very much to the Vale for that. Well, dreams of the Challenge Tour can wait a bit for Brandon Robinson Thompson. For now, it's all about enjoying a special moment as he becomes the 13th different winner from the last 13 Euro Pro events. Nevertheless, it is a win which sees him soar from 10th place to number two on the order of merit with half of the 16 tournaments now played. James Allen's share of second sees him leapfrog Pavan Segu into the number three spot. Dermot McElroy not here this week, but still out in front. And from here, it's on to England's northeast and Slaley Hall for the Q Hotels Collection Championship. Join us again for that. Bye-bye.